quick video today talking about scan data and RF Explorer and some other goodies. I am out with the band OAR and along with the Goo Goo Dolls this summer. And we are at SPAC today, beautiful venue. I wanted to show you a couple things in regards to scan data. If you haven't watched any of these videos before, usually I do a daily coordination, kind of show you how I coordinate frequencies using Shure's free wireless workbench software. And today was a pretty light day, so the coordination was pretty straight ahead. If you want to look at my steps for coordination, there's other videos to check out. But this one, I just want to kind of compare some scan data using, obviously, the native Shure units networked, and then also just the very affordable RF Explorer and see the difference in the scan data. So I'm going to show you right now. I am using an RF Explorer, but I'm also inserting a 6dB pad onto the antenna input, and I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. But in order to get the scan data in from our, an RF Explorer, I've been using Touchstone Pro. It's not free, but it's very affordable. It's like 50 bucks. By default, this usually comes up and starts at 470 to 600. I usually edit this to 608, hit start, let it do its thing for 30 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. And then I stop it and then go to file, export, max, hold, trace. I'll go into new, another video maybe with um, Touchstone Pro, but for this purpose, all we're trying to do is to get a scan of the environment. The reason why I'm using this on this specific run is because we're the support act to the Goo Goo Dolls. So oftentimes my gear is even off the truck in the morning. By the time I'm able to get to my gear and do a proper scan with networked units from Shure, Goo Goo Dolls is already fired up with their RF. So it's hard for me to get a kind of an idea of the environment in the morning because I don't have access to the gear. So I've been using an RF Explorer just to give me an idea of the environment. I definitely don't use that as my only scan data for sure, but at least it allows me to kind of get a jump ahead on the day and maybe do a couple of preemptive things to be prepared. So what I've done is you're going to see a scan today in the morning with nothing on, just the environment, but it's an RF Explorer scan. I'm going to show you a scan with a pad on the RF Explorer. And I'm also going to show you the data with the Shure Network units and also after everything's fired on from the Google Dolls, what the uh, RF Explorer shows. So as you know, this is the coordination window with all the scan data. And on the left here, you've got your actual scan data by units, et cetera, et cetera. When I walked in this morning, this is the scan I did in the morning with the RF Explorer. You notice that the noise floors are very high. This right here, I believe, is a house PSM, probably for hearing assist. That's what that is. It's very wide. But right now, it's just kind of blocky, and the noise floor is pretty high. That's what it looked like in the morning. And I think I did SPAC with, maybe I didn't put the pad in. See, so yeah, there it is. Let's see what this says. Yeah, okay. If you see here in the blue, that is after I inserted a 6 dB inline pad. So you can kind of see the noise floor gets knocked down a bit more. Just as an example, it's kind of blocky with a 60 p pad, you're down more. But now I'm going to go ahead and do a scan with uh, an Axiant unit. And there's where that is. So if you look here, honestly, the RF Explorer with a 60 b pad is closer to what the Axiants are seeing. But the big difference here is like here. So if you see this spike here, this is a PSM 1000 spike or IEM transmitter spike. And you see the resolution that the Axiant picked up, a nice clean spike there. But on the, on the RF Explorer side, it's more of a gradual spike. So if you were going by this data, you know, here's your exclusion line right here, 85, right? All of this space up to that point would be considered off limits because it's above that line but that's not really true. So if you scroll through here a bit more, you can also see where some of this accuracy, it's a bit strange. Up top here, you're seeing, this is the Axiom line down here. What it's seeing, that's a TV channel here. Weak TV channel, but it's a TV channel. But the RF Explorer kind of captured a lot of noise up top here. So let's go ahead and add in the in-ear monitor scan, PSM 1000. Now PSM 1000 is in general, have a much lower noise floor, as you can see. And once again, the resolution is around the money. 
the, the green is the PSM. So the noise floor is much lower on the PSMs. Now I'm going to go ahead and introduce a scan once the headliner has turned on their stuff. What you're seeing most of the time here, these spikes are their PSMs. So you're seeing spikes. This is probably more like an instrument, but that's definitely a, an inner monitor. And you'll notice you, you kind of kind of can figure out what is a PSM because it's going to take up a bit more bandwidth, the IEM transmitter. But that's what those things are. Now, I also did a scan with an RF Explorer after everything was turned on from the Google Goo Dolls and then show the resolution. So it's this orangish color, and you see how here it's not really differentiating much between these spikes. It's kind of just like it's there, it's really there. It's not super accurate. And once again, the noise floor is crazy high. It's good to have an RF Explorer. It gives you an idea of the environment. It's definitely better than nothing for sure. But you have to be careful when you're coordinating using that scan data exclusively. But in general, if you're just doing a very wideband scan, a quick scan, just be aware that the RF Explorer's resolution in wireless workbench is not as accurate as the Axion scan or the PSM 1000 scan or the UR4D scan or, or whatever. All that kind of stuff. And remember, the, the most important thing is to be able to see what the units themselves are seeing. So therefore, you can calculate based on that. All right, so that's it. I hope that's helpful. I'll try to do uh, some more scans soon. Also, don't forget, I am giving Wireless Workbench 7 a try. I'm not using it for shows yet because I still have some older UR4D. Wireless Workbench 7 does not network with them or gather any scan data from them. So I'm kind of holding off, but I am trying to upload some scans to the uh, kind of the cloud database for sure. So if it's helpful, if those things are helpful, just let me know, send me a note or, or something in the comments. I think on my Facebook page, <laughs> I think for um, Sound Nerds Unite, I'm starting to, to publish those. I'll try to get them up on the website soon too. All right, hope this is helpful. Any more questions, check out soundnerdsunite.org. Thanks.